Here is a demo of the application that you are going to be creating at the end of this course. So as I mentioned, uh, this section where we are going to create this app is not available yet. I'm currently working on it and I will be adding new content gradually during the next weeks. So what we are going to do is we are going to use Svelte of course and Svelte Kit in order to create a mini Spotify clone. So here we can log in and this will take us to Spotify in order to log in. So I'm going to log in with my account. And then we're going to have this home page where it's going to contain some sections like new releases, featured playlists, and some uh, other playlists related to specific categories, like so. And then here, this will list your own playlists. And for each one of these sections, you can click on see all. And this will display more content with a load more button here to load more content. And if we open any album or a playlist, we're going to get this page. And what's cool about this is uh, this color that you see in the background, similar to the Spotify app. This color is going to be calculated based on the uh, album cover or playlist cover. So if we go to another album, it will have another color and so on. So if we, let's say, let's open any album. In here, we are going to be able to play a preview of the song. So I'm going to play, I don't think I'm going to put the audio, but trust me, it's playing. And we can also add a song to a playlist, which we are going to take a look in a moment. And then the other page is search, where we are going to be able to search. So here we have some categories that we can go to. Uh, which will also have some playlists related to this category and load more and everything as we've seen before. However, we can also search here. So let's search for something. And we're going to get some results for albums, playlists, and also artists. And so for albums, we have a page to display albums. For playlists, we also have a similar page to display a playlist. And you can also follow a certain playlist here and unfollow. And we also have pagination here. We also have um, a page for an artist. So we can go to an artist. And we also have this uh, the same color thing for artists as well. And for each artist, we display the top tracks. We display albums uh, appears on. And each one of these sections can also be uh, can also have its own page where we are going to have more content that we can paginate through as well. We are also going to have uh, this menu here where you can view your profile. We also have a page for profile. And in here, we're going to display just a username, followers, and the artists that you are following. And as we mentioned, uh, each artist, we can view all of course, and each artist will contain his own page as well. We also have this playlists page. And these are your own playlists that you created or playlists that you are following. So if we go to home and follow some playlist, let's follow any playlist here. It should appear in our playlists, as you can see. And we can also create new playlists from this button here. Where Let's create maybe test playlist with some description. And it's going to be created and we can add content to it by going to, let's maybe search for content. Let's open anything. And let's try to add uh, some songs using this button here. So the playlist that we just created, let's add a couple of songs. Let's go back here and our playlist should now have these couple of songs. And in here we also use the same color thing in the background color. So if we, let's say, remove this song, it's going to be updated with a new color based on the new image, new cover image of our playlist. We can also edit a playlist. So let's maybe correct this typo here. And it should be reflected instantly in our page. And that's mainly it. We can also, as we've seen, remove songs from our playlist.
During the course, we will also try to make uh, our application as responsive as possible. So we'll try to make our app look fine for all uh, screen uh, sizes. We'll also take care of things like accessibility. We will try to make our app accessible using the keyboard. So here I'm only using the keyboard for navigation and I should be able to do anything in the app. Right. And finally, this app is also going to be fully functional even without JavaScript. So if we disable JavaScript here, let's try to refresh our page. And as you can see, there are of course some changes. So we don't have the drop down menu. We have a normal menu here because we don't have any JavaScript functionality. Our player uh, looks different, of course. It's a native HTML player. Here also, instead of the drop down menu, we have a normal form with uh, just an HTML drop down and a button. However, everything should be functional. So let's try to add maybe this song to our playlist. Our page will refresh, of course, because we don't have JavaScript. However, it should still be functional. And our track was added. We even display a message here. We can remove it. But of course, removing it will require reloading or refreshing the browser. So let's go to, the, to our playlist, make sure the song was added. And here we have it. We can still, uh, we can of course remove songs. We can also edit and add playlists. However, this will take us to a new page. And uh, let's try to add also. And everything should still be for, uh, functional. However, of course, not exactly like when we have uh, JavaScript enabled. Let's also see how other things are going to be handled, like pagination, for instance. Instead of the load more button that we cannot have, of course, without, uh, without JavaScript, we have normal pagination, uh, next page link, and previous page link. And also we can, uh, let's go to uh, open any playlist. We can still follow playlists, however, uh, clicking on that button is going to reload our page. But anyways, that's it for this demo. As I mentioned, I'm currently working on it and I can't wait to finish it and share it with you in our course.